know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. This passage from Romans uses the Greek word kairos as the root word for time. Kairos is a special word for time as opposed to chronos, which refers to ordinary time. You can tell by looking at your chronometer, your watch. But the time that is written about in Paul's epistle to the Romans, and the hour that is mentioned more than once in our gospel lesson this morning, this is no ordinary time. Jesus says, that day and that hour no one knows. Keep awake, therefore, you must be ready the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour, like a thief in the night. We don't have the perspective, as the early church did, that Jesus is coming back in our lifetimes. This is undoubtedly the hour that Paul and Jesus are referring to, a time of crisis, a time of judgment, an apocalyptic end of the age. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken, and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together, one will be taken, and one will be left. This is apocalyptic time, and in this hour of Kairos, we are being held accountable for our faith, for our devotion. The first century church was living in a time of stark reality. The church went underground for fear of the governmental and religious authorities. Most of the apostles were martyred. Naturally, there was a yearning for the second coming of the Lord the vindication of our God. But today we are living in a time of relative comfort. You might be tempted to hear these passages and consign them to the anachronistic dustbin of history, anachronistic, literally backward time, not in our time. No one is out to get us. There is no urgency, no need for vigilance, or so it seems. Paul in his epistle, and Jesus as recorded in Matthew 24, give us much different, perhaps complementary, prescriptions for action in view of this moment of kairos. Paul, in his writing, says that such a time as they were experiencing in first century Palestine required a superior morality. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. That's good advice for any age, but Paul goes too far when he writes, make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. If we took Paul literally at this point, a race would have died out 20 centuries ago, either by starvation or through the of celibacy. Jesus, thankfully, takes a more positive approach. Paul's morality of thou shalt not gives us energy to pursue Jesus' morality 
a thou shalt. Jesus' statement that alludes to the end of time is placed in the context of the, of the climactic moral imperative of the Gospel of Matthew. If you want to see me again, Jesus says in Matthew 25, if you want to see me again during your lifetime, then feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, welcome the stranger, clothe the naked, comfort the sick, visit the prisoner. Inasmuch as you do it to one of the least of these, you do it unto me. Or in the summary words of the musical Les Miserables, to love another person is to see the face of God. That is, after all, the supreme Kairos moment of life. See the face of God. Isn't this our yearning still after all these centuries of devotion of the people of the kingdom? After 150 years of commitment of the people of this parish? Isn't this what I discover when I welcome the residents of our sober living home to see the face of God? Isn't this what I look for when I greet you every Sunday? The second coming may be a long way off. In the meantime, we are privileged to find God among the poor. Perhaps these passages are not anachronistic. Perhaps they are meant for this time and this place to see the face of God is a desire of the nations which brought the shepherds and the wise men to the stable where Christ was born. So this is indeed the hour if we are to be vigilant in our reaching out to the poor of our global community. This is what the church must be about if we are all to honor Paul's admonition. You know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. It's ironic that the statement of Jean Valjean in Les Miserables, to love another person is to see the face of God, is placed in the context of an apocalyptic hour for the citizens of 19th century France. The four ingredients of an apocalyptic hour are these. First, an assessment of the crisis of the moment. Second, a voice from afar that is calling us to action. Third, a call to action that takes us out of our comfort zone. And fourth, a longing for a better reality in an age to come. Listen to this apocalyptic vision expressed in Jean Valjean's final plea. Will you join in our crusade? Who will be strong and stand with me? Somewhere beyond the barricade is there a world you long to see? Do you hear the people sing? Do you hear the distant drums? It is the future that we bring when tomorrow comes. This morning as we participate in the Advent expectation of the coming of our Lord, can we also prepare for his coming with renewed vigilance? and devotion? Can we find ways to create a world of nurture and love, of hospitality and abundance, 
of justice and peace for all of God's children and especially for the Christ child. Can we make this church great again through our generosity? Will you join in our crusade here at the Church of Our Savior to be an evangelistic outreach and a beacon of compassion to the people of the San Gabriel Valley and beyond? Will you join in our crusade?